What is going on everybody, Zonic here, and in today's video, I'm going to be bringing Jump Bluff here to the Spring Cup. Now, the Spring Cup meta is, is kind of all the same, right? Fairy, Grass, and Water. Most teams are Water, Double Grass, Grass, Double Water, a sprinkle of Fairies, a little bit of Weezing, and uh, today, well, I'm not really changing it up that much. It's obviously a Dugong Double Grass core, but what I think is really cool about Jump Bluff is the ability to core break. Much like Tropius, having Air Slash, uh, Aerial Ace, and Leaf blade here for jump fluff we have fairy wind acrobatics and energy ball it's much more charge move hard hitting uh, on its impact instead of uh, air slash fast move kind of farm down uh, both of them have a lot of bulk and this team actually did pretty well now our core here is going to be dugong and trevenant we're going to utilize the jump fluff as a safe swap even in worst case scenarios like an obama snow or a dugong swapping in you can still do super effective damage which is really nice for this pokemon all right, getting into the first battle, we have Dugong on the lead versus Lantern. Now, this is obviously a really bad lead. We're going to go ahead and get into Jump Bluff, and my opponent is deciding to stay in. Now, they're loading up on a bit of energy, and now they swap into a Carbink. And this is the first time I actually saw this Pokemon in this meta. Very surprised to see it. It is a Fairy, so it is allowed. But with all the Grass and Water-type Pokemon here... Honestly, really surprised that uh, Carbink is making it into it. Now, what's cool about Jump Bluff is the fast energy gain with Fairy Wind as the fast move, right? And the hard-hitting energy ball and acrobatics. These charge moves hit like a truck. And granted, that is a Carbink. It is as bulky as a Bastiodon, just for reference. And we are going to go ahead and shield the Rock Slide there to take this into the ones. And then look to go for another energy ball. And this is going to get pretty close. Um, this, uh, this Carbink has a lot of health remaining still we do get shield number two we do get the uh, debuff as well which is really nice it's an added feature there of energy balls the defense potential defense drop as we uh let the rock slide go through now dugong coming in uh we're looking to keep one shield for trevenant hopefully so we want to throw this drill run right away and then we're gonna look to go into trevenant to close this game out we don't know what they have in the back but if a carbink was the best answer hopefully trevenant can do well and sure enough it is going to be an ivysaur back there so that is going to be a good game now i misplay this right here I underestimated how much damage, I thought the Shadow Ball was going to one-shot right here, but it didn't. They survived, which now allows them to get off a charge move, and this is going to get a lot closer um, than it really should as we go ahead and shield the Sludge Bomb, and now the Lantern coming in has a lot of energy. Uh, we need to be able to throw two Seed Bombs right here, so this is where I kind of misplayed it. What I should have done is just really load it up against the Ivysaur, then throw the Shadow Ball after Shielding Sludge Bomb, right? That would have been the play, but here we're not able to get to the next Seed Bomb in time, unfortunately, because of the, uh, the misplay right there, right on my end. It's not... Quite, a, it's not too often you face off against an Ivysaur in the Great League and understand that a Shadow Ball can or cannot KO from a certain health range, but we are not able to win charge attack priority. They get to the charge move, but thankfully it was just a surf. So Dugong is sitting just fine. We are going to be able to get to the drill run right here, and this is going to be a good game, very well played. Really close one right there. Really cool to see stuff like Carbink and Ivysaur. All right, moving into the next one, Dugong versus Trevenant here on the lead. Now, this is what I love about Dugong as well as against Grass-type Pokemon. It can still do super effective damage. And my opponent has to swap out just because of how oppressive Ice Shard and Icy Wind is going to be. That is how strong Dugong is. Now, we can go ahead and go for Drill Runs here because Empoleon swapped in. And uh, they're going to be looking to go for the Drill Pack. Now, we can easily let this go through and then try they went for hydro cannon instead they should have gone for drill peck it's the same energy i'm not sure why they did but we're going to go ahead and try to commit to the farm down we will shield right here we have quite a bit of energy so in the trevenant mirror we should be able to get to the shadow ball before them um, in order to uh to put pressure down but they swap in a dugong which is perfectly fine by me i'm going to go ahead and go for double seed bombs here They're obviously going to do a lot of super effective damage we'll probably get a one shield as well there's the first one and then now hopefully we can get to it in time they might just double shield and commit to the farm down if they do so be it um, but we're going to go ahead and we do land the seed bomb right there and they decide now to swap back into trevenant to get the aggressive farm down so this is going to be a close one um, what we need to do is we need to come in with Dugong and catch the charge move on Jump Luff. 
And just like that, Jump Fluff, Grass Flying, gonna be resisting the Seed Bomb right here. The good old peekaboo as we catch the charge move and now we're in a very good position. Jump Fluff is off and running. We get to the Acrobatics, but unfortunately it was on Charge Attack Priority and we're gonna be losing that one. So I'm gonna go ahead and No Shield. It is gonna be Shadow Ball. And then uh, we're going to go for the acrobatics. Now, my hope here is that the dugong is not going to be able to fast move me down in time. But they actually decided to shield, which is pretty big for me as I decided to go for energy ball. This is probably going to be seed bomb. So I'm just going to go ahead and look to let this go as we do hang on with one HP and a dream. The jump fluff, I'm telling you guys, is so thick and so much fun. We are able to survive and land it. We're going to go ahead and counter swap into the dugong and then we're going to look to go for the drill run uh, basically right away now i make another misplay i decide to one go two over i don't know why i <laughs> just i'm always in the the mode of get some extra energy for the next matchup but in reality i, I survive a drill run regardless so don't worry uh, as you guys see right there but in reality i should have just thrown drill run right away and then uh, fast move because it's one fast move here against Trevenant and that is going to be a good game very well played. All right, moving into the next one. We have Dugong versus Roserade here on the lead. Another grass type Pokemon that Dugong loves seeing. Look at the damage of Ice Shard everyone. This is grass against water and this is just, this is beautiful. Uh, we're going to go ahead and no shield as well. I think this is just a weather ball. It wasn't enough energy. It's good grass not though. The happily, not happily surprised, um, but I thought it was just going to be a weather ball. It was, it was sadly not. Icy Wind does land there against Gyarados. We get the deep, uh, the debuff is obviously going to come through, but now we got to come in with Jump Luff, and I, I don't. I'm, I'm doing really bad with Jump Luff on my timings here because I'm always throwing on Charge Attack Priority when I should just be going for extra energy. This is just uh, bad news bears on my end. But ultimately, Jump Luff really strong in this meta as we do get a shield there against Shadow Gyarados. And then we're going to look to go for another energy ball. If they they will be Charge Attack Priority, we're going to go ahead and let this go. If it's uh, Crunch, so be it, but I think it's just going to be an Aqua Tail. And it is, so we are able to survive Jump Luff. Living life on the edge right here. This is what you'll find. Um, my IVs are also not great. Uh, I just used my hundo that I had to flex it. Like, why not? As we will see the Ro Roserade come back in and load up on energy. I unfortunately can't get to the energy ball in time. So now what I'm going to do is come in with Trevenant and swap into Dugong. Peekaboo number two. We're catching charge moves today. We're making up for all the bad energy play and channeling it into to catch us as we will be able to safely shield this next charge move uh, it's going to be the weather ball and then we're going to look to uh to farm down with shadow claw and then we get to see that ooh, it is shadow whiz cash in the back this is beautiful seed bomb obviously going to be one shotting right here a normal whiz cash would basically get one shot a shadow whiz cash is uh, definitely getting one shot. So there's no need to really shield this charge move. Hardest hitting move left in the game is going to be Weather Ball. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and let that go. Even if it was Scald too, we can safely let that go. You just want to make sure you don't get hit by a Weather Ball. That is the important thing right here for a Trevin. And as we go ahead and land the Seed Bomb, boom, see ya. And then we fast move down and that is going to be a good game. Very well played. All right, moving to the next one. Dugong versus Shadow Mawile. Shadow Mawile is a tough one to face off against. Um, honestly, it really starts ramping up its damage, and this team can handle it, but it can only handle it with its charge moves, uh, which can be a bit tough, especially if they decide to start double shielding, because if they do here, obviously, then they're going to be... I think they also caught this charge move as well uh, as I went for the drill run here. Yeah, they caught it on Azumarill, and then we're going to be uh, loading back up on energy. I'm going to let the Azumarill throw. Both Pokemon in the back are weak to Ice Beam, um, so I'm going to go ahead and let them throw the play rough. I just want to make sure I have enough energy. And uh, we're going to go ahead and now load up to double. I'm just going to bank all the energy in the world. And now I'm going to swap into Jump Pluff right here. Um, Ice Beam will hurt. It's not going to one shot. But I will give up a shield because I think the energy ball is going to be enough to KO from this health range. It's going to be close. Um, I haven't done it and done this uh, matchup in a long, long time. I can't even remember the last time I used Jump Bluff. Had to have been a year or two years ago. As we go ahead and go for the Energy Ball here, we do get a shield. So now we're in an interesting position here against Azumarill. 
um, where we can safely uh, shield again because the Maw while if it comes back in, which it does, you guys are about to see how hard Acrobatics can hit. This is a resisted charge move, but this thing hits like a truck as uh, the Maw while unfortunately is going to just, <laughs> it's blasting today. And as you guys notice, the Fire Fangs aren't taking us down that fast. It's because of how bulky we are, how bulky the Jump Pluff is. Power Up Punch, again, nothing. We can easily swap out now into Trevenant, saving another charge move on Jump Pluff. So now it is a team of charge. I have three charge moves loaded in the back. Double Icy Wind or Drill Run, one of each. And then we also have a uh, Energy Ball. And now we see Venusaur come in. So we're going to go ahead and go for Shadow Ball right away. We want to be forcing that final shield from our opponent. Their win condition is basically no shielding. And, uh, well, they tried to go for the win condition. That's why we always go for the uh, the Shadow Ball in that situation. Again, we have Icy Wind. We have uh, Acrobatics that we can get to. Azumarill decides to swap in. And now this is going to be where we can get to a Seed Bomb as well. So Trevenant really holding it down for me. as This is going to be doing super effective damage. And uh, they decide to give up the final shield there. Obviously, Azumarill is their final Pokemon. So we're going to come in with Dugong. We're going to go ahead and go for the Drill Run here. This might just be enough damage uh, to KO, but it's not. Azumarill hangs on with 1 HP in a dream. Things are getting a bit interesting. That Venusaur had some energy. Play Rough is going to land. We're going to go ahead and fast move down, and we're going to look to go for the Acrobatics against a 1 health Venusaur. Literally, every single Pokemon in this game got to 1 HP and tried to hang on. Boom! See ya, Venusaur. That is going to be a good battle. All right, getting in the next one. This team was pretty fun to use. Dugong, Pelipper. Okay, so Pelipper obviously can be a bit tough depending on where it's at with its energy. These type of Pokemon that have a Weather Ball Hurricane combination, a low energy bait, high hitting, uh, hard hitting neutral damage or super effective charge move are dangerous in the right situations. On the lead, especially against an Icy Wind Dugong, it's not that scary. So we're gonna go ahead and let the Hurricane go through. It does land, they decide to swap in Ferrothorn, so we're gonna go ahead and bring in the Trevenant right here. What's good about Trevenant is the Shadow Claw damage that it's applying. Uh, yes, we have to watch out for Flash Cannon. That is gonna be a move a lot of Ferrothorns do run in this meta, so I'm gonna go ahead and shield, and it was, so that is perfect. We're gonna go ahead and throw Shadow Ball now, and then we're gonna try to go for the aggressive farm down with Shadow Shadow Claw. That way we can throw Seed Bombs here against the Pelipper. But they decide to shield, which is fine by me because now I'm going to go ahead and go for another Shadow Ball. This should just do enough damage to KO. It's going to be extremely close. But yeah, we get the KO, which is perfect. Um, they wanted me to spend that energy so that Pelipper could come back in and uh, have a better farm down but ultimately they have wheezing in the back and this pokemon can do super effective damage with brutal swing so we need to be careful there but i'm going to go ahead and let it go hoping that i do survive and i do we see the swap out into pelipper so i'm going to go ahead and go for seed bomb here um it's granted i was kind of anticipating them doing that but the seed bomb does land we now swap into Dugong, and we're going to go ahead and go for Icy Wind. This is basically going to secure the win. Drill Run will obviously one-shot, uh, or near one-shot, if they decide to let it go, um, but they decide to surrender. Anyways, we still have Jump Fluff, everyone, right? Good game. All right, getting the next one, Dugong Meganium. So Dugong right here can come back into this matchup, but first we're gonna swap into Jumpluff and they bring in Azumarill. So this is a prime example of core breaking water and grass teams. People who run like us, running the uh, water double grass, grass double water. Because if the water cannot do super effective damage in a fast move form, something like Dugong or Snow, the Jump Pluff actually can do very well in a lot of those matchups. So we're gonna go ahead and just constantly load up on energy. Energy Ball is gonna be doing fantastic here for us. We're, we're gonna go for Switch um, and they decide to let it go. Boom, see ya. And uh, Meganium now coming in, this is this is beyond over. We're sending Meganium back to the prehistoric ages, back to season one, two, and three, because Frenzy Plan and Earthquake are not gonna be doing it. I'm, I'm overloading on energy. There's a Ferrothorn that swaps in as well. So we're gonna go ahead and go for Acrobatics. You guys can see how much damage this does in this matchup. Look at that, just about 50%. We'll give that a 42, 
42.0%. We go ahead and go for energy ball now for the shield bait, but my opponent decided to no shield. I think they know it's over and they're just wanting me to take them out, but ultimately I'm, uh, I'm still playing playing it as if we got a, a, got a game going on. They're going to go ahead and go for the thunder here. And then I'm going to go for the acrobatics. Remember, we still have Trevenant with Shadow Claw. We still have Dugong with Ice Shard. And uh, Icy Wind is acrobatics. will take it out. And then we're going to swap into the Trevenant. And that is going to be a good game. Very well played. All right. Moving into the next one. We have Dugong on the lead versus Mawile once again. Now, the normal Mawile isn't as bad. Um, in terms of the damage that they're going to be doing to you because of the Fire Fang Power Up Punch combination, right? But they swap into Lantern, which actually works out pretty well because Drill Run was being thrown anyway, so that's going to be doing super effective damage. We're going to go ahead and bring in Trevenant now um, to start getting ahead on energy and uh, look to throw a seed. I'm, I really want to try to overload here, right? We got Mawile that's likely going to be coming back in to farm us down. I don't want it to get a lot of energy off of us, and I want to be able to hit uh, at least one Shadow Ball against them, maybe a Shadow Ball Seed Bomb before they can commit to that farm down. So we'll see if we can get there. Boom, down goes Lantern. We're likely only getting a Shadow Ball here, just looking at our health remaining, but they bring in a Shadow of Bomb of Snow, and I was not anticipating that coming out. I was expecting another water type Pokemon. A Shadow Ball will be shielded. So they're running a very interesting ABA weak to Polyrath team um, where they have their hard answer for Polyrath being Lantern, but they have the Mawile and a Bomb of Snow core. Uh, which is uh, which is pretty interesting. So we're going to go ahead and look to go for Icy Wind. We are in a very tough position right here because Jumpluff is extremely weak to both Powder Snow, um, Weather Ball combination, and also the Fire Fang. Um, now we were able to get the final shield there, and my opponent shield baits me once again with another Weather Ball, so I'm just getting... Uh, I'm just getting caught left, right, and center, and they will get to the energy ball in time, unfortunately. Not able to catch it right there, as it is going to be landing for super effective damage. We're going to go ahead and swap out into our jump bluff to save the dugong. Mawile is coming back in, and this is basically a good game on their end, um, just because of how strong... Again, like I said before, Jumpluff does very well at core breaking teams who do not have the fast move pressure against Jumpluff. So you're looking at things like Lantern, Poliwrath, um, maybe uh, you know other grass type Pokemon, maybe Trevenant, right? Meganium, Ivysaur, Venus, Venusaur, um, Jellicent. Uh, it's a really uh, it's a really good Pokemon to have. The Jumpluff is to be core breaking that. Uh, but ultimately, when you see Powder Snow, Obama Snow, Ice Shard, Dugong, Shadow Fang, Mawile, these are the type of Pokemon that can that can really beat that. And unfortunately, we go down at the last second. I just want to rewind that for for one second. Ah, uh, I had there it is, there it is. I had it right there. I had it. I go down. Ah, good game. All right, moving to the next one. Dugong, Marsh Stomp. Okay, so Marsh Stomp just gets shredded by this whole team, to be completely honest. Marsh Stomp is one of those Pokemon, I, I really like it, but it, it just doesn't live up to the power uh, that its dad does, Swampert or, uh, or Whizcash, for example, but it can still do well. Um, now, this is a shiny Marsh Stomp flex, uh, but ultimately, what I'm trying to read is why my opponent is deciding to stay in, because this matchup is not going to be well, or do well for them after this icy wind, right? Things are going to start getting bad, so I'm going to see what they do. They decide to shield, so now I'm reading, okay, maybe they have, they're weak to Dugong, so there could be something like a Tropius in the back. Um, so I'm going to look to swap into Jump Luff right away, and they're staying in. And they actually decide to swap in a Shadow Mawile. So, or a uh, normal Mawile, I should say. So we're going to go ahead and go for Acrobatics here. Again, a lot of damage that this thing can do. About 50%, which is beautiful when it comes to resisted damage. As they're going to go ahead and throw the Charge Move. This Power Up Punch, it's going to do nothing. Um, but if it's Iron Head, it's, it's not. It's going to be Power Up Punch. We are able to now overload on energy and go ahead and go for another acrobatic. So what you guys are seeing in this situation is we are up against a Mawile, but we are ahead on energy and shields. And we are able to get the final shield of this game. So now we're looking pretty good. I can't really come in with Dugong because I think I would get fast moved down too quickly. So I'm going to come in with Trevenant. 
We also can no shield this charge move. It's likely going to be power up punch them anticipating uh, the um, the dugong come back in. But I can actually fast move down with Shadow Claw. We lost a lot of our health. But they come in with Marsh Stomp, and I'm so confused now. Now I'm starting to think, like, what what could it be in the back? Like, Seed Bomb, boom, lands, and the final Pokemon was its dad, Swampert. So, they had an ABA team right there, the little guy and the big guy, Marsh Stomp and Swampert, double purple as well, so really cool combination, but ultimately, boom, obviously my team was built uh, to really, it could really handle that team well, so they didn't have any win cons in front of them, so good game. All right, Empoleon here on the lead. Um, we're gonna we're gonna look to stay in as draw run, and this is a this is a good learning situation for everyone. Empoleon now is meta with stealing as the fast move and not waterfall, especially in this specialty cup, because the steel wing is going to be doing a lot more neutral damage to some of these Pokemon that you're going to be facing off against, whereas the waterfall is likely resisted by almost everything. So we're going to go ahead and go for Drill Run here. We do get a shield, so we're going to go ahead and throw another one. Now, this Drill Pet coming through, I think we can survive. I'm going to let it go, and we do. So we can easily get to this next Drill Run in time. I'm going to have to swap out now into Jump Bluff. I can't keep Dugong here um, to get farmed down, so I'm going to go ahead and swap out, start getting ahead on energy, and they bring in Ferrothorn. So this is a really good matchup for us uh, because of the damage that Acrobatics can do. Um, as, uh, it's just so much neutral damage. Now we also have to start questioning what else could they have in the back. This was their best answer. Are we going to see another grass back there? Can Trevenant handle that? Like what is what is it going to be back there? So we're going to go ahead and let the Flash Cannon go through. Jump Fluff being extremely tanky. And we're going to look to throw Acrobatics now making sure we overload on energy. Empoleon is low so we're not too concerned about that. We'll be able to aggressively farm it down. Boom! Down goes Ferrothorn. Final Pokemon is is a surrender so i'm guessing it was another grass um so good game to my opponent right there all right moving to the next one we have dugong versus dugong here on the lead um now double dugong is probably going to mean double or um dugong on their lead is probably going to mean double grass as well in the back and my grass type pokemon do very well against other grass types right you got the shadow claw shadow ball combination you got acrobatics and the bulk there and the flying typing on jump bluff um, so what we're going to look to do is just go straight drill runs in this matchup but my opponent decided to go for icy winds and now they decide to swap out into ferrothorn so there is one grass type pokemon which again ours do better in these matchups uh, which is why this double grass combination can be very strong it doesn't mean it's the only double grass combination that you can run paired with a dugong lead um, you could use something like roserade you could use something like tropius ultimately what you want in the grass type pokemon that you are running is the ability to cover the water uh, type Pokemon in this meta, so having a Seed Bomb, having a, an Energy Ball, having a Leaf Blade, and also being able to do neutral or super effective damage to Grass. This is why Pokemon like this are shining, as uh, the Ferrothorn is able to get to one final Mirror Shot right here, and we can survive it. We do see Dugong come in, which is going to allow us now to get to the Seed Bomb here in time. This is going to be doing super effective damage, as they do decide to shield, and unfortunately, we get fast move down before we can get to another charge move in time, but because we have Jump Pluff in the back, obviously we have to come back into the mirror. We are no shielding. Once again, there's no reason to be shielding this early. They decide to throw another Icy Wind, which is telling me they really want to swap out into their Grass-type Pokemon at some point. So I'm going to go ahead and throw a Drill Run here, and I'm anticipating them uh, swapping out after this next charge move as they do decide to shield. So they obviously, they're very fearful of my Dugong, so I'm curious if it's going to be Tropius in the back. Acrobatics can handle that, so we're going to go ahead and let Icy Wind go through. We're going to swap into Jump Pluff now, because again, they are so scared of my Dugong that I am willing to come into this matchup. This is the 2-0 to zero shielding scenario for us, but they actually had a Pelipper back there, so not the Pokemon I was anticipating. Um, I definitely thought it was going to be Tropius based on the shielding that my opponent has done, but Acrobatics able to do about 50% right there, which is really nice, and we are able to get to Energy Ball. Now, if this Pelipper wants to take out Jump Bluff, it has to throw a Hurricane. So we're going to go ahead and no shield, and it's going to be a Weather Ball. We are able to survive that. 
Uh, Dugong coming back in. Uh, this energy ball should be enough. It is neutral damage. Boom. See ya. Uh, Dugong coming back in is now low enough. We have the uh, the one to zero shields. We have a drill run ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and throw it before an icy wind can come through. And then this is going to be a good game as we can easily go for one last drill run to close this game out. Um, so good game to my opponent. Ultimately here, I think what happened is uh, they were very fearful of the dugong and they were uh, throwing icy winds and in scenarios where you can just get away with throwing um, just drill runs in the mirror. Uh, but good game regardless to my opponent. All right, that was the final battle. This team was quite a bit of fun. Uh, to be honest, I think it was pretty refreshing using the uh, popcorn ball there, Jump Luff. Um, and obviously, the Dugong Trevenant core is really strong. Now, if you don't want to use uh, this core, Dugong and Tropius is also very strong. So I would uh, recommend that as well. Uh, but overall, this team did pretty well for me. Really happy with the, uh, the Jump Luff there. Some great booms today. And uh, Dugong, obviously, you guys know I love this Pokemon. So hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And like always, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.